G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color blue, we've got Salami playing the Abbasid Dynasty. And on the other side of the map, playing as the red color, we've got 3DB playing as John Dark. That's right, folks. It's just John Dark. Now, it's important to remember that the passive on her W grants her a massive amount of movement speed whenever she scores a last hit. This gives her an absolutely huge scaling advantage, especially after securing Baron in the Imperial Age. Wait, what's Your this? Oh, no! Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe we have a third player joining the match. It's Beastie QT playing the Jade Empire. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that one. What's up folks, it's Chili, and I'm here to talk about Age of Empires 4. And today we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, the new civilization variants. Now first off, what is a civilization variant? Well, they're a new type of civilization that's coming in the Sultan's Ascend DLC. In addition to the two fully featured civs we're getting, the Japanese and the Byzantines, we'll also have four additional civs that are variants of existing ones. Now, let me start off by saying that this expansion is incredible value. Some of the best value I've ever seen in a strategy game, period. The price point of $15 USD is just insane. If I'm going to be honest, I expected just a single civilization to cost $20, considering the amount of work that goes into these things. I mean, think about it. I know there's probably not a lot of overlap between League and Valorant players with Age of Empires, but those are two of the most popular multiplayer games out there right now, so I'll use them as a comparison point. A single skin in those games can easily cost over $20. That's a single skin! Or in the case of Valorant, a single gun skin. 15 bucks barely buys you dinner these days. Hell, it barely buys you fast food. So, the price point is amazing. The value that's being delivered here is unbeatable. Two new highly requested civs and a new campaign and then we're getting four additional civ variants on top of that, that's just too good. That's just too good. I've worked in the games industry. I know how hard it is to build these things. Each civ has unique character models for each unit, for each age, unique voice actors for each unit, with multiple recording variants, including whisper variants when they're in stealth forests. And the language that the units are speaking evolves through the ages in a historically accurate way. What? And then you got the unique architecture, unique mechanics and balancing. Hell, I've never even seen these things, but we even get unique ships. Not to mention unique art, unique music that's specific to the culture and also advances through the ages. And don't forget, each civilization even has a menu theme that plays in the background when you pick it during the pregame lobby. A new civilization in Age of Empires 4 is an extremely high effort project. And for a lot of these tiny details, the majority of the player base won't even notice them. Like, who cares that the French man-at-arms looks different than the English man-at-arms? Hell, who even makes the French man-at-arms. This is not the kind of stuff that will make people buy copies. This is the kind of stuff that only true nerds would appreciate. The geeks. The people who can really see the passion put into these games. It's art. I know that if I was on the team, I would not be able to financially justify this kind of design. So believe me when I say this. I'm really thankful to Relic and Microsoft for their investment into the future of this game. They're probably pricing this low to try and give AoE4 one last big shot at a big break, and to get the popular recognition that it deserves. But, that's right, this all leads up to a big, stinky butt. Age of Noob pushed out a video recently, and I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. In his video, he shared some information regarding what we can expect with the new variants. They're basically fully-fledged civilizations with new units and mechanics, and that's all awesome. But what the heck are these names? It's like watching your soon-to-be wife walking down the aisle, more beautiful than you can imagine, and then she trips and lets rip an absolutely massive fart. I wouldn't even know what to say. I just wish things happened differently. Like, I love her, don't get me wrong, but alright, I'm getting way too carried away here. The point is, the names suck. They don't follow the convention that's already established by the game. They're fantastical, and yet vague at the same time. And they make the Civ roster look just plain silly. Like, imagine Jean d'Arc going up against all of China? What, what even is that? Worst of all, they box out the potential of historical civs that maybe were smaller level polities that likely would never be represented as a full civ, but could be represented as a faction variant, like Burgundy, or the Teutonic Order, or the Mamluks. Look, I'll still be getting the expansion, and I'll still be playing the heck out of this game. Hell, I'll probably even really enjoy playing these variants. This isn't a deal breaker for me, but I do really, really wish that the names would change. If you haven't noticed, I'm a big nerd about 
history. In fact, I'm probably going to be expanding this channel beyond just AoE content and move into more history related content in the near future, so look out for that. When I play Age of Empires, it's not just about the competition nor the nostalgia. I really like the historical immersion. I like the feeling of a good, cohesive, thematic design, one that allows me to live the fantasy of these historical battles. I remember the first time I amassed an army of Mangudai and right clicked my way through the enemy base. I can still hear the lamentations of their people in my dreams. Uh, I, I meant that in a positive way, but I'm also not saying I'm sadistic. Look, anyways, I recognize that what I'm saying is built on thin speculation. I don't know for sure if these names are set in stone. Maybe they're just internal code names that got leaked. So let's think about this a little bit more seriously. Here, here's how I think faction variants might work. I can think of two ways to go about this. Either provide value by changing up the cosmetics, like the skins in a mobile game, or provide value by changing up the gameplay, kind of like the alternate characters that you see in Smash Bros. Now this is a bit of a spectrum, and it kind of depends on what resources the developers have more readily at hand. For instance, new cosmetics may take a lot of effort to make, but once you make it, it's not too much effort to maintain. And if you have a robust art team, you could reskin a faction relatively quickly. On the other hand, changing up the gameplay, i.e. new faction traits, new landmarks, new units, it's less work up front, but it does take time to balance it, and it'll also have cascading effects on all the other civs and maps, both now and into the future. So this could require more engineering and QA maintenance. From what we've seen so far, we'll probably be getting a mix of both. The recent Sultan's Ascent trailer showed a horse archer unit for the Abbasids, which they currently don't have. Now this might be a campaign specific unit, but this could also be a unique unit that maybe replaces the Abbasid camel archer for the new Sultan's Army Civilization variant. It probably represents the forces of Salahuddin and the Ayyubid dynasty who famously used horse archers to wear down the crusaders. I think it would be really cool to see a variant on the Abbasids that doesn't build the House of Wisdom, and instead this opens up the possibility of many other famous historical landmarks being represented. Could it be that we're going to see the Dome of the Rock in the game? Now we saw this interesting picture of the Holy Roman Empire with this distinctly black armor design. Originally when I saw this, I thought it was a confirmation of new civilization skins, i.e. color or cosmetic changes. All of the architecture and landmarks here remain the same. All of the units also remain the same. We even see the HRE unique unit, the Lance Connect, represented here in beautiful black ornamentation, as well as the prelate. Now that we know that the Holy Roman Empire will be getting the Order of the Dragon as the variant, it could mean that this is a picture of the Order of the Dragon. Now historically, the Order of the Dragon was a knightly crusading order centered around Hungary. It was a staunch opponent of the Ottomans and had some famous members in its ranks, including the father of Vlad the Impaler, Count Dracula himself. Could we be getting Dracula as a hero in the game? Holy shit, maybe he could press W and sink into a pool of blood and dodge mangonel shots. How sick would that be? I would personally love the possibility of a Hungarian or Romanian faction in the game. I've actually been brewing up a concept for the Hungarians for a while now. I just really hope this Civ variant doesn't box them out. At least give me some Hussars. But if I was doing a faction variant of the HRE, I would have gone with the Order of the Teutonic Knights. Since the launch of the game, I've seen a new thread each week asking for Teutonic Knights. People just can't help themselves with those badass helmets. But I mean, they also interacted quite meaningfully with many of the other civilizations in the game, namely the Rus and the Mongols. The faction could also have a trade mechanic associated with the Hanseatic League. Ah, oh, man, why, why was the Hanseatic League not in HRE's design? Meanwhile, France randomly gets trade bonuses? Anyways, speaking of the French, we have this picture of the French. Originally, I thought this was something from the campaign. Joan of Arc as a hero, perhaps. But now, with this new announcement, I gotta take a look at this again. The thing is, we already know what battles and heroes would be featured in the campaign. It's all Islamic characters. So if I'm a betting man, I'd probably say that this is the Jeanne d'Arc Civ variant. This hero unit up front, it's probably the Maid of Orleans herself. And she clearly has the English king symbol above her head. And she's holding this really weird looking thing that almost looks like a hand cannon. So I guess Jeanne d'Arc is a mounted hand cannon here confirmed. Real talk, I think a faction centered around a hero has a lot of potential. I like that the devs are being creative and mixing up the gameplay. I just wish the name of the faction itself didn't break so hard from established convention. I've seen some people on the forums suggest Orleans as an alternate faction name, maybe that could work, or maybe we can have the Burgundians and rename the hero to something else, I don't know. We also have this image here, this crazy looking tower in the middle. Maybe this could also be a new landmark. It kind of looks like a super tower for the Abbasids, so maybe it's something for the Abbasid variant. There's also tents outside, I originally thought that those were just campaign specific assets, and they might still be, but now I wonder if they're tied in with the Sultan's army faction. And lastly, we can also see the Knights Templar hanging out at the bottom right here. And we can see that one of them is decked out in gold and stands out from the others. Now, when I originally heard that we were getting civilization variants, I thought we were getting, I don't know, the Kingdom of Jerusalem or the Crusader States. That's what these images suggest. Tell my lord Salahdin, the Jerusalem has come.
But none of the faction variants listed would really make sense to have Templar Knights. Maybe the Order of the Dragon with the HRE? I just think there's so many missed opportunities here. Now the one civilization variant that we got absolutely no information about is the Empire of Jade. Oh no God! Ugh, God, I hate that name. It's such mystifying orientalist bullshit. It conjures up this image of like a Fu Manchu and some overgrown fingernails. What are we gonna get next? The fucking Ten Rings? The Mandarin himself shows up smoking an opium pipe? Actually, that'd be kind of sick. Now, once upon a time, I recommended that Korea would be the faction variant for China. And I got a lot of hate for that. I've since recognized my faults and I've reformed my ways. And that's why I made a separate concept for Korea. And honestly, while doing it, I got myself pretty hyped about getting the Koreans in the game. Look, if I'd learned anything from this is that the way civilizations get represented could get real political real fast. And if I had to guess, that's why the Abbasid dynasty is called the dynasty instead of the caliphate. There's something holy and religious associated with caliphates. Similarly, there would be rioting in the streets if Korea was a sub-faction of China or Japan. I think that's part of the reason why the developers chose to give the civilization variants these odd and weirdly fantastical names. But I mean, there's still plenty of historical polities that just aren't around anymore that would still make great factions to get in the game. Burgundy is one of them. Another one is the Jin Dynasty. These guys were the ones that put the Southern in the Southern Song Dynasty. Back then they were called the Jurchens, today they're called the Manchurian. And prior to the Jin Dynasty you have the Kitan Liao Dynasty. Basically what I'm trying to say is you could make a whole Northern Chinese Dynasty sub-faction. And they'd even fit within the existing Chinese Dynasty system. There's a lot of history here that can still be represented. And let's be honest, no one weeps for the Jin Dynasty today. They were utterly annihilated by the Mongols. I don't think there's going to be any backlash if we choose to represent them as a sub-faction. Oh, just imagine if we had the famous Jin Dynasty heavy Chinese cataphracts, the Iron Pagodas. Man, these guys look sick. Actually, why aren't these guys in the game already? Okay, this is probably the longest video I've ever recorded. Ultimately, does this matter? Not really. But hopefully this video was entertaining and helps you sympathize with us history nerds. I've rambled and ranted long enough. If you listened to the end, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this epic monologue, give it a like. Give me a subscribe. I'll be making more AoE content and history content in the near future. Stay frosty, stay chilly. It's just John Dark.